Okay, so our next speaker is, uh, is Siva. He is a software architect for Real Image Media Technologies. Uh, he started his career in uh, embedded app dev using C, C++ um, a decade ago and is a contributor to the GStreamer and uh, log for c libs and is a passionate open source contributor. So without further ado, over to you. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, a distribution protocol that is uh, getting developed in Go. So um, it all started like this. Uh, we were looking for a, a di content distribution technology or a stack that we can use on our application. And uh, we ended up uh, finding this interesting project called IPFS. It not only does uh, uh, content distribution, but it also takes care of a lot of other things. And it aims to solve a lot of uh, problems in the web. So uh, IPFS is an abbreviation for interplanetary file system. Um, the idea is uh, one day we will use this protocol to uh, communicate between planets. Uh, so uh, that is the idea behind this name. And uh, it is a new hypermedia distribution protocol aimed to make uh, web faster, safer, and more open. It is a fully open source project hosted in GitHub. Uh, everything about the project is available, including the roadma roadmap, spec, and everything. And the core implementation happens in uh, Go. Uh, uh, IPFS is also uh, being implemented in other languages like JavaScript, Python, and C++, and many more. So uh, before I tell what is IPFS, let me just uh, brief you about uh, the problems it is trying to solve and how it is trying to solve. I'll start with the uh, network topology, as uh, network topology uh, impacts the reliability and robustness of the uh, network. So here you can see the diagram of uh, two different networks, centralized and decentralized network. So uh, as we all familiar in centralized network, the all clients connect to a centralized server, and uh, they pull content from the centralized server, they push content to the centralized server, uh, so in this setup, it is easy to publish a content and also to update the content, but it is uh, really difficult to scale up the network when more clients joins the network. And also there is a single point of failure in this setup. So we kind of realized this early and we started moving to a decentralized setup where there are multiple servers within the network and clients connect to a server based on the locality and the availability of the content. Um, so decentralized setup uh, demands I mean, handles demand and failures better than the centralized uh, server. Um, for example, uh, more demand could be handled by adding more servers, and uh, failure in a single server is not going to affect the entire network. But uh, in IPFS, IPFS is a fully distributed network, um, so which is for superior than the centralized and uh, decentralized network. It is superior in a way that uh, here each, uh, I mean, before that, a uh, yeah, device that is attached to the IPFS network is called a node. So I'll stick with the term node. Um, yeah, node is, uh, I mean, it, there is no distinction between a client and server here because every node is connected with the each other node, either directly or indirectly. And each node acts as both server and uh, client uh, to provide its own content as well as to consume content from the other node. Actually, this was the original design behind web, where the users of internet supposed to run both web server and uh, web client uh, to provide their content as well as to consume others' content. But it ne never happened, and the IPFS tries to achieve that. So um, in web, most of our contents are stored in, um, in a centralized location uh, or, or in a single server. And this forces the client to connect with the server whenever they want to work on the content. Um, this is not a big problem, I mean, considering the connected world to today. But it could, be a big, it could be a problem if the user travels a lot. Um, so there are applications like Google Docs that provides offline capability. Uh, but each of them has their own implementation, and there is no standardized way of doing that. In IPFS, uh, your node. Uh, communicates with the other node only to retrieve a content or to re retrieve information about other node within the network. Even these connections are opaque to the 
applications, the applications can work on any data as long as the content is available on the local storage. This kind of provides a built-in support for offline uh, functionality. And uh, whenever the user becomes online, uh, his changes are synced with other node. And um, there, is a, there is a data structure called Merkle, right, which is a core part of IPFS that simplifies the syn syncing process. Next, we move on to permanence. It is, it is about the availability of the content. Uh, unfortunately, web doesn't provide any uh, guarantee for the content that we store on the server. Uh, the content that we store on the server it is at the mercy of the app and the server where we store. And uh, frequently, contents are deleted uh, accidentally or sometimes intentionally for reasons like censorship. In IPFS, uh, the contents are cached at the node's local storage whenever they are retrieved from other nodes. So this automatically distributes the content to multiple nodes within the node network. And there is no single place to destroy the content permanently. And also provides a, a functionality called pinning that, uh, I mean, you can basically pin your content on a local storage to make it available permanently to prevent it getting garbage collected by the storage system or, or the IPFS storage system. Um, I could give an example for this. For example, I mean, uh, we could pin all our blog posts on our uh, local storage so that it is available to everyone uh, within the IPFS networks. So uh, web also doesn't provide any guarantee for the I mean, in, uh, integrity of the content that we store on the server. Again, the content that we store on the server is safe as long as the server is safe. If someone gains access to the server, they can uh, change their content, change their content, and we'll have no idea to, I mean, whether they really changed or not. This is also due to the way we address content in web. Um, so, as we know, the content uh, are usually addressed by their name, but technically, uh, there is no relation between the name and the, and the content, actual content. So, anybody can change the uh, change the content without changing its name. Uh, this is kind of useful in a lot of situation where we can update the content, but it could be a problem if the content is a uh, very sensitive data. There are bandaid mechanisms like GPG and checksum or, uh, uh, or I mean, uh, invented, but they add either too much overhead or too difficult to enforce. So uh, IPFS, in IPFS, the contents are addressed by their content or the cryptographic hash of the content. So practically, it is uh, impossible to change a content without uh, affecting its identity. And um, we can also use name, I mean, if the content is dynamically changing one. And whenever we use the uh, ID based, or I mean, whenever we use the cryptographic key based ID, um, IPFS uses a hashing mechanism called multi-hash that allows to change the algorithm in the case of uh, the, if there is any vulnerability in the algorithm. And it doesn't affect uh, the entire infrastructure. I mean, let's say uh, there are thousands of contents that uses SHA-1, and someone find a vulnerability in SHA-1, and all of us moving to SHA-256. And uh, we can use SHA-256 all the new contents, or even for the existing content, but whoever refers to the old ID still works. In IPFS, the nodes are also identified by their uh, cryptographic uh, key hash. And this allows to verify the authenticity of the node whenever we communicate with the node. So uh, in web, most of our uh, contents are stored on the server. And um, this is not a problem if both server and uh, the client located in a nearby location or the latency is low, but it could be a big problem if they are far away and the latency is high. And it's going to affect the download time a lot. And this setup also wastes a lot of bandwidth because this doesn't consider the fact that the same content could be available in a nearby location, even it could be an, another client. To uh, understand this clearly, consider this example. Um, that 30 of us here, I mean within this room, received a link to a video. And all of us wanted to uh, watch the movie, and we started downloading it. So we will end up wasting 
48, I mean, if we, if we have to travel across eight servers, we will end up wasting 48 GB of uh, bandwidth just to watch the same video, which is just 200 MB. IPFS tries to solve this. So in IPFS, uh, there is no distinction between a client and server, as well as the content is available at multiple location. So a yeah, node can retrieve a content from any node, uh, and it could be uh, from a node, I mean, it could be a nearby node also. And this not only reduces the latency, but it also uh, allows us to download the content in a parallel. So practically, whenever we download a content in IPFS, it could come from any node, and it could be uh, come, it could come from a person sitting next to you also. This saves quite a lot of bandwidth and time. So so far, we have seen uh, the problems that we face with web today and how. I IPFS tries to solve that. Um, so now I'm going to say how I mean how we can use IPFS in our own applications. Before that, I would like to highlight few popular adoption of IPFS. Uh, NeoCities, which is a free web hosting uh, company that uh, started using IPFS to archive their website, and um, FreeNAS uh, integrated IPFS in their uh, distribution so that user can download content from IPFS. And uh, there is uh, another project called uh, Registry Mir Mirror that uh, mirrors the NPM packages in IPFS so that you don't need to depend on the Node.js uh, site every time. It could be downloaded from your uh, colleague or peer or wherever the uh, package is available. So uh, we can use IPFS as a distributed storage for our application. In fact, this was the original re reason how I found uh, IPFS. Apart from all the reasons that I mentioned already, it has a built-in support for content de duplication. And the deduplication happens at multiple level. Uh, it happens in the node level. I mean, if you if you store the same content in a two different uh, uh, directory, uh, actually, the, uh, it will be stored only once. And it also happens within the content uh, level. Like, uh, there is one portion of content, uh, I mean, there is one portion of data or a chunk repeated within the content. Um, actually, they, they will be stored only once. They are not stored uh, multiple times. But yeah, reference to that is stored uh, within the content. And um, IPFS also has a built-in support for uh, storing directory hierarchy, including the symbolic links. So you can store a file, and you can create multiple directories, and you can refer that file in all those directories. But it will not; uh, uh, it will it will store it in an optimized way, so that uh, I mean the content is not actually duplicated. You can use uh, IPFS as for a P2P communication. Let's say you want to uh, develop. You want to create a, a chat program or a, or a, some productivity app uh, uh, that uh, that uh, you don't want to rely on any server because you you, you see that it could be used in offline uh, scenarios or uh, you you can uh, I mean if you I mean you don't want to um, have the pain of maintaining the server in that case you can write a P two P I mean you can use the uh, IPFS P two P communication in no, your own application. So the IPFS P2P communication is available as a separate Go package called Go Lip P2P um, that you can use in our own application that can be used independently uh, from uh, the main IPFS project. Uh, it is designed or implemented in such a way that uh, the layers of the uh, library could be replaced. For example, the transport layer is uh, um, I mean, there are multiple options already in the transport layer. Uh, we can use TCP, UDT, or uh, uh, UTP, UDT. But we can also plug in our own implementation. And uh, in this P2P uh, communication, the nodes are addressed by the ID. Uh, this allows the allows us, I mean, allows the machines or nodes move from one one network to another network without uh, affecting its identity. I mean, if we if we were if you are using IP IP address, then it, it's going to affect uh, whenever we move from one network to another network. But whereas in IPFS, as we are using ID, it's not going to affect. And um, we could use uh, components of the IPFS independently. We already seen how the uh, P2P communication po portion of IPFS could be used in our own application to achieve a P2P uh, communication. And uh, the hash. Hashing, hash encoding called multi-hash 
algorithm independent uh, hash encoding is also available as a separate go package so uh, you want to store some hash in an algorithm independent way you could use this package and there are many such a components available in IPFS that we can uh, use in our own applications so what I covered is a very uh, high level overview of what is IPFS and now we could uh, in our own application. For more information, you can have a look at this, uh, their official site, uh, ipfs.io. And there are quite a lot of videos available in YouTube about IPFS as an overview or internal details or how exactly it works. And there is a very active uh, IRC channel that you can participate. Uh, the current version is 0 0.311 and uh, 0 0.4 will be out anytime soon. And there are quite a lot of opportunity to contribute in IPFS. Please check their uh, GitHub project page and uh, go through their issue list. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Question. So how would the communication work? So if I am sitting here in Bangalore and I want to, some, I want to send some data to somebody sitting in Delhi. Okay. So, so how will this work? So, uh, uh, without knowing the IP addresses and all that. So yeah, without yes. Using IPS? So um, it is it works more or like a BitTorrent. Whenever you start your node, uh, it will be I mean all the nodes uh, are configured with a predefined Bootstrap node. They are a handful of nodes that you can change or add. So whenever the node uh, comes online, it's going to connect with that node. And whenever someone requests a content that is stored on your machine. Uh, he's going to send a query to all the connected node who has this content and it th this gets broadcasted to all the nodes and finally it will reach your node and your node will say that hey I have this content then this information will be passed to the original node okay there is one node in the Bangalore uh, this guy has that uh, information and uh, uh, it will also pass the IP address I mean IP address is at that point it happens only at that point so it could change at any time. Um, so now this guy is going to establish a direct connection with uh, you and uh, pull the content. So and yeah, go so ahead. The problem with this is if, uh, if I want to contact a server in Delhi, yes. then in most cases, only outbound connections are allowed. So for example, I cannot establish a TCP session with a server sitting at my home. Inbound connections are not allowed. So you can only no, it out. No, it is allowed. I mean, uh, Unless I don't get uh, why. Address. What, unless sorry? You unless you have a static IP address. No. Um, so, IPFS has a built in uh, NAT punching uh, implementation, which is another component that you could use if you want. Um, so, uh, with that, you can directly establish a connection within a, uh, within a NAT also. So, uh, as I said, uh, if each node carries a uh, unique ID, you can also uh, refer the ID to establish a connection. I mean, um, say you are using the P2P implementation of uh, the IPFS and you are exposing a service rather than a content. And you want to connect to that node and you consume some service. Then you, ha you have to publish your node ID. Uh, and, and in that case, I can directly connect to that particular node. Hey, uh, this is very interesting. I've been working on something similar, so now I don't have to anymore. Okay. My question is, uh, how do you, you were saying you broadcast your request through the network to find who, how do you do broadcast? No, uh, uh, maybe broadcast is not a correct word. I mean, it's basically I'll send it to all the nodes that I'm connected with it. So uh, they will have, I mean, they in turn send it to the next node in the, in the distributed network, uh, uh, to the next node. And whenever uh, the message is received by the original author or the node that has the content, he replies that uh, I'm having that content. So how does that scale and when you have, like, if you're far enough, this means you're going to spam your message across the whole, so do you do, like, if... if yeah, like the searching or the initial um, mechanism of finding who's having uh, that content is going to take some time, but once after that, uh, the communication will be directly to that node. Hi, uh, can you say more about the content deduplication, you know, and why you would uh, need, and uh, you know, at what level, how, what is the granularity uh, at which, you know, the content deduplication works? So it is more about uh, uh, content deduplication, right? I couldn't hear. Yeah, the content du deduplication. Yeah. So uh, in IPFS, as a uh, distributed storage, 
uh, whenever we add a content it is uh, it is first split into multiple chunks and the chunks are stored within the storage and each chunk is addressed individually and there is another chunk created that says that for this file these are all the chunks so uh, how it works is say um, you have a presentation or you have a uh, some a uh, word document or something where you used a particular picture multiple times and uh, theoretically it can find that uh, this particular image is being repeated i mean when it chunks uh, uh, if we assume that the image will be in a separate chunk it's not going to repeat the image multiple times uh, in the actual storage it could simply refer that this image is repeated in the first page or uh, uh, reference in the first page last page or middle of the document so this happens uh, i mean this kind of uh, deduplication happens at the within the content level and within the storage uh, like you could have a file that is stored in multiple directory and in the, if the file is uh, same but with a different name it's going to uh, identify that because it's going to hash the content and use the hash uh, as the id so uh, it can find out that it is the same content and uh, avoid storing it multiple times so it will delete the uh, second uh, duplicate copy no uh, all this happens at the time of uh, uh, adding the content to the ipfs storage so there is no deletion i mean ipfs uh, you give a storage i mean you you basically allocate a storage or a, you know, specify a directory where it stores uh, all its uh, data and whenever you add a content it's going to do this chunking it's going to do the de du deduplication at the time of ad adding so then uh, it must also have a copy and write uh, in, in case somebody wants to modify the second uh, reference sorry i didn't get that so let's say you know there is uh, file a which has same content and there's file b which has same content now let's say uh, file b will be modified later you know to something else in which case you know you have to do a copy and then you know no it happens automatically let's say 5a 5b uh um so both are same it started as the same document but after that you added some pages in the 5b document now it's going to uh when you add this 5b again it's find out that uh, there are some new chunks in the document and it's going to uh, store only this new chunks in the uh, storage and is going to refer the old chunk from whatever it already stored it's not going to duplicate it thank you hello yeah i have a question Sorry. Let's say I have ten nodes, and I need to define that uh, these three nodes will receive this content. Is it possible to define it? No, I mean uh, I I don't think it is possible with IPFS, or uh, uh, I don't see that the way distributed system works. I mean you uh, really don't control. Uh, you can control at your node level. I mean you can say I want to store this node in IPFS. You can uh, say I want to store this node permanently or not. but uh, not uh, not on the i mean push level you cannot push it hi this is gokul i yeah. have a question related in one of your slides you mentioned that mm. in one of your slides you mentioned that uh, the address is the hash signature of the location that is um, to in order to load an address let's say you will use the hash signature of the address or a cryptography signature in zooko's triangle you have three things i mean if it is secure and decentralized it is very difficult to get human readable uh, a human friendly thing so for example how will we uh, be able to remember an address if it is going to be very difficult like a hash, hash signature so if you have decentralized and secure then it is very difficult to get the uh, get a human input for example in in onion service onion hidden service it is decentralized and secure it can be but that you cannot remember a big random string of characters for an onion hidden service so how does ipfs handle this zooko triangle problem yeah for that uh, ipfs has a, a naming system ipns it is called so basically what you do there is you assign a name to a hash so you uh, expose this name to uh, uh, the outside nodes or the user they will uh, use the name but in turn the name will be resolved to a actual id and the id is what uh, used uh, um uh, to actually retrieve the content this also helps in addressing the dynamic content because in a in a live document where it's getting updated on a regular basis you cannot use its hash as a id it's going to change every time so uh, what you do is you assign a name you create a name and you store this id in the name and whenever the document gets updated you update the uh, namespace so that whoever refers that name it's get resolved correctly thank you Yeah. Uh, thanks, Yuva. Uh, 
So did you get any chance to uh, do a comparison between uh, IPFS and uh, BitTorrent's Mailstrom? Uh, from what I understand, it's pretty much the same. Uh, it's in the same, it, it, they, they both of these projects are aligned in what they want to do. <coughs> How do they want to handle the distributed systems? Uh, does IPFS is, is any different from Mainstrom? Yeah, um, actually uh, IPFS derives many of the uh, technologies from BitTorrent. But uh, certain things uh, it is doing differently is uh, in BitTorrent you always, um, uh, I mean I don't see there is any deduplication happening in BitTorrent. And uh, uh, each file or each content that you share in BitTorrent is a separate document or a, or a, or a separate torrent file. Whereas the document uh, or the content that you store in IPFS is addressed globally using their ID, I mean using their hash. So there are many such uh, differences uh, that you can check on their website. I mean, there is an interesting uh, um, uh, presentation by uh, Juwan Bennett. Uh, uh, I mean, he presented this IPFS in many places, Google and a lot of things. There he compared the differences between uh, BitTorrent and IPFS. Yeah, uh, hey, thanks for the good talk. Uh, actually, I was about to comment on the same question you, he had about comparison between BitTorrent, Mailstorm, and IPFS. So I would say that IPFS is actually a file system and BitTorrent is actually a, the application level protocol. Yeah, actually. Which uh, people use to download content like web pages, audio, video, etc. But IPFS is something which is a, actually a file system. BitTorrent is not a file system. Is that a correct? Uh, that is true, but IPFS is also a protocol. I mean, it uses a protocol called BitSwap. Um, so that basically decides um, uh, how the chunk will be exchanged between the nodes. And uh, even that part is uh, uh, changeable or customizable. You can, I mean, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the BitTorrent concept of how it favors a particular node. If one guy is only uh, leeching or only downloading the content and uh, uh, the tracker is going to stop sending content to that guy or the other node going to stop sending that content, all those, can, all those strategies could be implemented with uh, IPFS. Uh, but it is very open. I mean, uh, you don't want to stick with one role. You want to come up with uh, some different uh, strategy for uh, distributing the nodes. You can do that in IPFS. Uh, hi. You said the you said yeah. IPVS is very uh, modular. Can I use uh, uh, it just for discovering nodes and have my own transport between them so I can send arbitrary data? Definitely. That is the uh, lib go lib p2p. You can just import that module and you can create a, a new, I mean, there are certain configuration. You, you just need to say what is the uh, ID. You need to, uh, either you can generate a key dynamically on demand or you can have one key, uh, key pair and use that uh, as an ID for the node. And that's it. After that, you can directly communicate with the other node if you know the ID. And you can even expose your own service. Hey, uh, my question is not directly on IPFS. Say, since this IPFS is touching into distributed uh, systems and uh, cryptography, so IBM has recently open sourced a huge chunk of code on blockchain uh, stuff, right? So, what do you think about that? Uh, well, sorry, I didn't get that. IPFS open sourced what? No, no. IBM has open sourced. Uh, Golang based blockchain technology, which uh, is also like tying into the cryptography and distributed systems, right? So what's your opinion on that? No, I haven't uh, <laughs> heard about it. I'll check it, definitely. That's it. That's it. Any Thank other you. questions? Okay. All right. Thank you so much.